You just tried to justify Muslims conquering Christian lands, but you're now going to say it's wrong for me to advocate the conquest of Muslim lands. So go on, explain why it's okay for you to conquer our lands, but it's not okay for us to conquer yours. Yeah, that's very kind. That's very kind. Take no care. Worries. Yeah, bro. Do you have any more questions? I don't mean to be disrespectful. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry. Don't well, worry. The, thing that's is, fine. the only thing, the only reason I'm not trying to be disrespectful was because what you said about Prophet Muhammad. I yeah. can't. I disagree with it completely. Well, that's, that's fine. You're entitled even, to disagree. Even, even like you know, a lot of Christians talk about the name Allah. Yeah. In the Christian, in the Arabic Bible, the Christians read the name Allah. Yeah. In Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke is Allah. So I do feel whatever that like is, there is a bit of an attack on anything that's close to Islam or Arab. Ar yeah, it depends who's doing the talking because I would never attack Christians using the term Allah. Allah's just because I know just the way I know you lots. I, you, you, you're talking to somebody who already knows this, bro. Like I know Palestinian Christians. I know Egyptian Christians. I know Christians from all different kinds of Arabic cultures. I know they use the word Allah. So I haven't got a problem with that. And I'm not also, I'm not asking you to hate, to attack Jewish people. I'm just saying the state of Israel, there's Jews against it. There's a group called the Natcha Carta. But I'm not, I'm not interested in this Islamist agenda. It's not an Islamist. It's, no, I, I'll, it's I'll not speak from my own agenda. I'll speak from my own agenda. The reason why, bro, I castigated you in the way that I did is because whenever I'm talking, so I talked about the persecution that Christians faced. Yeah. And whenever I do that, there's always, always, always a Muslim that says, what about Israel? What about the Jews? I'm on record, you've even heard me on record today with your own ears, saying that as Christians, we should stand against Israel where Israel is persecuting Palestinian Christians. And it's not just Palestinian Christians. Israel discriminates against Messiah Christians. So they discriminate against other Jews that are in Israel because they've become followers of Yeshua you know, the, the, the Messiah. So I, I condemn that as well. And I think we should stand against Israel's it actions. It has the right to exist. It definitely has the right to exist. Why not, can it be not be, why can they not live there like it was before as Palestinian Jews? Right. Why does they have, for me, it's terrible. I mean, for me, obviously I'm Palestinian. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make you this deal. If Muslims agree to give back North Africa, the Middle East, and all of Turkey to the Christians. Wait, hold on one second, I'm making you a deal. If you will come on camera and say on camera that Muslims should give up all the lands that they conquered and give them back to the Christians that they stole them from, then I will say that Israel should come under Palestinian authority. But that means that the Muslims have to leave Bethlehem, they have to leave Nazareth, they have to leave... I'm also from Nablus. Yeah, yeah. They have to leave that because this is lands that they conquered. So Muslims should leave those lands. It was not in the same lands. way. It was not in the same way. Oh, no, no, they, they, they just did it earlier. They did it in exactly the same way. They used guns. Well, they didn't use guns. They used Gangs. swords. No, they used swords. They used horses. They used javelins and spears and, and arrows. Israel used jets and tanks and machine guns. If you're saying that it's okay for Muslims to conquer other people's lands, does then it's okay for Israel to conquer your lands. Well, if you're willing to condemn, if you're willing to condemn Muslims conquering other people's lands, then I will condemn Israel's conquest of your land. We got a deal? You're going to do that on camera? But hang on, it's all conquering the That's same That's a no time. then, isn't it? It's a no, no because then. Because there's different ways to conquer. I don't, I mean, there's ways we can be really murderous, but there's ways we can spread, but without like, mur like not murdering people, but you could conquer. I mean, look, I mean, you've got Britain, that was originally Celtic and the Anglo-Saxons came. Yeah. You've got Australia, New Zealand, America, yeah, Canada. Yeah, exactly. So it's like... You've got Egypt and Algeria and Syria and Afghanistan and Pakistan. All lands that were stolen from other peoples. So wasn't it that Islam spread and people accepted it? No, they conquered those lands, bro. I know the history better than you. You've got... You've, there's, there's one area where Islam genuinely spread peacefully, right? One area. Indonesia. The place where Islam... You don't uh, uh, Islam, no, you conquered, though Muhammad conquered those lands. Muhammad conquered those lands. So what you're trying to argue to me is that it's okay for Muslims to do it to others, but Jews can't do it to Muslims. I disagree. I think if you're going to defend Muslims conquering other lands, then Jews can do it to you. Yeah, but the way the, the, the Zionists did it, it with gangs, it was, I mean... No, it, they did it with armies. Uh, no, there were the six Yergun. wars, there was, there was six no, wars, and each that. one of those wars... Jürgen, the Stern Gang, the Haganah, the... Those gangs also fought against the British. Yeah, and they killed some British. Yeah, I know that. But the, 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 they fought against the British. The British were also occupiers, like them. Yeah. But the was that wrong? 
Uh, they fought, uh, what they did against the British was wrong. So, so was it wrong for the British to occupy that land? I think the, the Arabs made a mistake when they went against the Ottomans. And they pretty much, and yeah. And they, and was it right for the Arabs to invade the Christian lands? Did that happen? Yes. Wait, where? Happened in Syria. Happened in Lebanon. I'm go off camera. Happened in, uh, well, I'll stay on camera. Right. You, you're off camera. You, you stand there behind the camera. I'll stand here, yeah? Right? So, it happened in Syria, it happened in Iraq, it happened in Lebanon, it happened in Egypt. Go and just Google when Muslims conquered Egypt. Just Google Muslims, when did Muslims conquer Egypt? It was Amr al Nawas, the companion, yeah. that went to Egypt. He was called Amr al Nawas. He conquered it. And now in Egypt, a lot of them are called Amr. But he conquered it, right? How is Islam reached Egypt? He can't, no. It doesn't stop us. Well. Google, don't be frightened of the question. This is the problem with Muslims, they're frightened of questions. Just Google, when did Muslims conquer Egypt? There you go. So why should I accept your complaint against Israel when they're conquering your land, when you're trying to say to me that it's okay for Muslims to conquer Christian land? Because there's a way. I mean, if you're conquering... So there's a right way to conquer and a wrong way to conquer. It's not all the same way. If you, let's say you want to conquer, uh, uh, you as a Christian, yeah. you want to conquer um, a nation that believes in idols, and you do it in a way where you spread Christianity, but you don't, like, you don't kill people. I think that would be better than they stay, uh, you know what I mean? So right, what you've just done there, you've just said that if you want to conquer pagan lands, that's okay, Not kill because them, the, by conquering them, you can help to spread the truth. Right, so Jews are just conquering pagan lands and they're helping to spread the truth. Then, because we disagree on what's pagan, what's... Exactly! So when Muslims invaded Christian lands and conquered Christian lands, they, we do not believe that we're pagans, we don't believe that we're polytheists. So you had no right to conquer our lands. So if you're going to conquer our lands, we can conquer yours. It's that simple. If you can justify conquering other people's lands, then we should conquer yours. And I think, I think, even more than this, even more than this, I think, I think... Jesus loves you, don't I'm sure he does, I love him as well. He's real. Sister, brother, let, let's stay in our conversation, let's stay in our conversation. So my question, my, my, I would say, brother, that I totally believe that we should topple the Taliban in Afghanistan. We should just crush that regime, bomb the out of them, all the leaders, and then liberate that land. Wait, I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I think we should conquer Iran, and we should the Ayatollahs that want to rule over the Iranian people, and we should liberate that land. I think we should conquer Saudi Arabia and free the people of Saudi Arabia. I think we should conquer North Sudan and free the people of the Islamists in North Sudan. And here's more. I think we should conquer Palestine and free the Palestinian people from the Islamists in Palestine. You see, here's the thing. You just tried to justify Muslims conquering Christian lands, but you're now going to say it's wrong for me to advocate the conquest of Muslim lands. So, go on, explain why it's okay for you to conquer our lands, but it's not okay for us to conquer yours. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying we is, we we let's say you come with the truth. Let's say you come to my, my country with the truth. I'd accept the truth. That's not what we're talking about. You're changing the topic. We're talking about that Muslims conquered Christian lands, and you tried to justify it. But in Islam, we don't force Christians to become Christian. You conquered Christian lands and you're still trying to justify it. It's not right, bro. So if you're going to say that it's okay for Muslims to conquer Christian lands, then it's okay for me to say we should conquer Muslim lands. Christians are conquering other people. Great. So we, so we both agree it's okay to conquer each other. Right, so now don't complain when the Jews conquer Palestine. But I'm saying we're not, we're not, we don't kill children. I know, I mean, yes, you do. No, we don't kill children. No, you, you can't. Shall, say, you can't no, say I can. That. I can. I can. I know exactly what the Muslims did when they came into our land. Shall I tell you? Because you don't know any of the history of what happened to our people. When the Muslims came into our land, not only did they desecrate our churches, not only did they kill our men and women, they enslaved. They enslaved our women. They enslaved. They enslaved our children. They kidnapped our children, forced them to convert to Islam and then sent them back to fighters. They desecrated our churches. They oppressed our people and made us second-class citizens in our own countries. 
that's what Islamic conquest meant for us. I mean, look, all I can say is, was it wrong? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not trying. There you go. I don't know the. I need to research. Yes, you do. I need to research. But I have research. I have research. What? 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 I know. The Prophet said, "You need those certain conditions in war. Don't kill children. Don't kill. Don't kill women and children. Don't even take down a tree." Shall I show you a hadith that disproves that? Is it authentic? Yeah. There's a. There's a hadith. Where, because of night raids, Muhammad would ask, if we attack them at night, their women and children will be endangered. And Muhammad's response was, well actually it's on the back of a night raid. So there was a night raid and women and children were killed. And the people asked the Prophet about it and said, women and children have died because of a night raid. And you know what Muhammad's response was? Yeah. You know what Muhammad's response was? His response was, they are from amongst them. So in other words, in other words, in other words, Muhammad didn't care that women and children got killed in a night raid. But we believe if a child that I, I don't how could, I thought we said that they're That's what he said. Because we believe all children are like they're all gonna, they're all like I don't know, do we believe they're Muslim? We, do we believe all children like they're all yeah, yeah. No you don't. We believe that the, it's only when they grow up after it. You don't believe that. You don't believe that. He's wrong. You don't believe that. You believe that all children are born Muslim, but then they are raised in other religions. So in other words, not all children are Muslim. If a child dies, it goes to heaven. So what you're saying is, what you're trying to say is, that it's wrong to kill children if they're Muslim. But they're not Muslim. And that's why Muhammad said, they are from amongst them, it doesn't matter if they get killed. That's a, that's a hadith. We can look it up and see, see what it says. Let's see what it says. My point to you is, bro, my point to you is, bro, that, that Muhammad legitimized the conquering of other people's lands, and then Muslims went on to conquer other people's lands, and now Muslims are complaining that people are complaining their land, co conquering their lands. I, I just want to say, I have absolutely no sympathy for them. The Taliban want to conquer other people's lands. I have no sympathy if somebody conquers the lands of the Taliban. Hezbollah wants to conquer other people's lands. I have no sympathy for Hezbollah if somebody conquers their lands. But I do have sympathy for the church, wherever the church is. So let me just find that. With regards to the Hadith, I'm not, I can't find it. Right, bear with us. We know from the era, yes. The only thing it's put on is that whoever imitates the people is uh, whoever this is, is exactly from them. What he's saying is that exactly hadith, I doubt. Exactly, because it was a specific case, and they kind of made a mistake, and he said, you know what, they're part of them, don't worry about it on this occasion. So I'm not lying. Now, my point is, the Prophet set that example. And so that's a terrible example, but you know that that's a terrible example because when Israel does it to Palestinians, you condemn it. But when Muhammad did it to pagans, you won't condemn it. If you're going to be consistent, if you're going to be consistent, you should, con you should condemn Muhammad and Israel. You can't just condemn Israel and then give claps to Muhammad. Can I answer your question? Yes. You as a Christian, if you believe, for example, that Jesus, you believe Jesus, everything he does is from, is going to be guidance from God. Now, if, if Jesus justified, for example, a, a child is, uh, gets killed, yeah. it's not the same as if the state of Israel and their leaders, you know what I mean? Right, you asked me if it was authentic, yeah. right? It is, I'm going to give you the reference, bear with us. <coughs> to be honest, it is so it's in Sahih al-Muslim 3941. The thing is, have, try and have, I know you and Shamsi and Hamza, you, you don't get along, but try and have a conversation with them. Shamsi just runs whenever I try to have a conversation with him. Yeah, don't put him on camera, he wants to be off camera. Stand there, bro, behind the cameras. There you go. But try, have, sit down with them and both of you, like, calmly, because the thing is, it gets heated. You're from the more knowledgeable Christians here, and they're from the more knowledgeable Muslims. It's better that you, the knowledgeable people, like, you're on the same level-ish, kind of, so. Sorry, I gave you the wrong reference earlier. You know that people would made a made a response video, Shamsi.
you know, challenge Shams, Shams is claiming that uh, Islam makes perfect sense. I agree with Shams. So yeah, what's I mean, your take on... Right, so hopefully, hopefully he's going to reply at some point. Yeah, because what's your people... take on Israel? Right, so hold on, I just I just want to, I want to try and, I just want to give it, it's Sahih al-Muslim, book 19, I just want to find the exact hadith. What's the hadith about? It's, hadith. it's just, it's in Kitab al-Jihad wal Sia, the book of Jihad and Expedition. But I can't find exactly which hadith. All I can say is it's in Sahih al-Muslim, where where Muhammad says during a night raid, some children are killed, and he says they are from amongst oh, okay. them. Yeah. My point to you is, can I just ask you? You know when Israel kills Palestinian children, and then justifies it by saying, well, they're from amongst them, they're they're them Palestinians, they're supporters of Hezbollah. You condemn that, right? Yeah. But when Muhammad did it, will you condemn Muhammad? Let me say why why any prophet, even if it was Jesus, because I believe they'd have guidance from God. Because there's a story of Moses, for example, yep. when he's with his friend, and when he meets someone, yep. and he says to him, bear with me for three days, and the man says to him, you can't be with me, you won't be patient enough. Don't ask me what I do. And one of, yeah, and he, one of the things he does, he kills a child. Now, why was did he kill the child? Because it turned out he was going to grow up to be disobedient. So he was going to like be a bad person. Right, one second. That, that, that's that, oh, one second. So it's another place that you can find it is Sunan Ibn Majah, two a three nine, and its grade is Sahih. Okay, so it's an authentic tradition. Okay, okay. So my point to you is, Muslims condemn Israel for doing what Muhammad did. That's it. Muslims condemn Israel for doing what Muhammad did. Yeah, I would say that so Muhammad. He's only as good as the worst Zionist. Just think on that, Muslims. Mohammed is only as good as the worst Zionist. Now, if that isn't a good reason for you to leave Islam and to reject Mohammed, I don't know what is. It would be a prophet. Let's say Jesus came and he said, you're going to have to kill a child. You get, there's going to be guidance from God. Maybe that child's going to be a rapist. There's going to be something. It's not like now anyone. Obviously now we're not guided like the prophets. So hold on one second, because the thing is, I'm inviting you to a better religion, right? I'm seriously, I'm seriously, I'm seriously inviting you to a better religion. And here's why I'm inviting. Let me, let me, let me finish my point. The Bible kill all women and children. Let me. I'll address that point in my answer. Yeah. All right. Okay. Expression as well. Action. Right. So uh, the, the reason why I, uh, I'm inviting you to a better religion, because as we've established, yeah. the worst Zionist is the one who justifies the murder of Palestinian children by saying that they're all part of the same group. And as we've established, Muhammad says exactly the same in the Hadith about the pagans, in Sunan Ibn Majah and in Sahih al-Muslim, book 19, right? Where Muhammad is literally as bad as the worst Zionist, and he says, that if the children die, they're from amongst them, so it's okay in the night raids. Now, let me finish. Let me finish. In Christianity, we follow the new covenant. We follow the teachings of Jesus and the prophets and the apostles. So we interpret the Old Testament literature through the new covenant. So coming directly to you, what you asked about the Old Testament literature. Christians understand that as a description of what God in, did in the past. We don't understand that as a prescription of what we should do in the present. How is that different to your religion? Because Muhammad is the best example to you, and so his examples are not just descriptions, they are also prescriptions, unless, unless there is an explicit statement that tells you not to follow his example. So to give you an example, Muhammad said you can only have four wives, but he himself had 13 and more. Yeah, but his life was different to ours. For example, his life was, we believe the prophets, not just the prophets. <coughs> Their life, when they were ill, they were more ill than us. Like, it was yeah. more to, so he would need more wives, just because yeah. it would be harsh for him to have only four wives, because it would be a burden on them. Right, you know, you, you, like, who is the better teacher? The one who lives out his own lessons, or the one that ignores his own lessons? Be honest. In terms of the people that we respect, forgetting prophets for a second, I'm just talking about people we admire generally as human beings in the world. Okay, okay. Do we not admire more the people that say and do the same thing? Isn't that normal? Right, so now apply that same logic to Jesus and to Muhammad. Because one second, Jesus follows his own teachings, but Muhammad literally says, there's one rule for you and another rule for me. Right? 
Christianity is truly a better system. I'll, I'd like to debate you on something. I'd like to debate you on something I'm, in a second. I'm going to see in Islam if, if we believe that other prophets had more than four wives. I think that's the, that's the question I want to know. I can answer that question straight away. The answer is yes. They were, so it yes. wasn't just a prophet. So it's, it's a thing for the prophets then. Right, hold on, no, you're, you're wrong again. You're wrong again, because at the time that the prophets had more than four wives, it was acceptable for the Jews to have more than four wives. But Christians follow the example of Christ. Christ, bride, is the church, and the church is one. So Christ only has one bride, and so as Christians, we can only have one bride. Is it, is, you mean the church is his bride? The church is his bride. Well, we believe, I don't know if you guys believe, that when Jesus peace be upon him, comes back, he will get married and he'll have children. We don't believe that. We don't believe that. We don't believe that. So my point to you is, bro, my point to you is, bro, I, and, and, and you, no, I wanted to invite you to go away, study it, come and talk to me again. But Muhammad is only as good as the worst Zionist. The worst Zionist uses the same logic that Muhammad used. And if, if, the, if, and if, if, if we are going to condemn the Zionists, and I'll join you in doing that. I did join you in doing that. You heard me join you in doing that, right? But if we're going to condemn the Zionists for murdering Palestinian children, then let's be consistent and condemn Muhammad for allowing children to be murdered and not caring about it. Well, that was, if it's true, I don't know the hadith. I showed you the hadith, you heard the hadith, I gave well, you the he references. Didn't, he didn't. Sunan ibn Majah, Sahih al-Bukhari, right, so, sorry, Sahih al-Muslim, okay, Book of Jihad and Expeditions, is, uh, say Book 19. True. That was one particular situation, what he set for us, the rules is, don't murder children in war, don't even cut down a tree, that was just one, like that was one occasion. But Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad himself over, what, oversaw uh, an act of genocide, an ethnic cleansing. You know what happened to the Banu Quraysh? But they broke a treaty, so war broke out. So the Palestinians have broke their treaty with Israel, so Israel is now okay to ethnically cleanse Palestinians. Well, no, because it's not really a treaty. Oh, hold on one second. It's not a, what's happening in Palestine, Israel is a treaty. But Israel, I mean, listen, if a woman that's getting raped constant, constantly, and then she goes, no. you know what, I'm going to have sex no, with you. No, no, one second. She's gonna, she, that's not that she's breaking. You don't, you, like, you should know, like, about the Camp David Accords between Yasser Arafat and between Ariel Sharon. Yeah, Wait, hold on one second. You just tried to say that the Palestinians have never broke a treaty. The, the Camp David Accords that were agreed by Yasser Arafat and Ariel Sharon were broken by the Palestinians. Now, wait one second. Now, one second, one second. Your logic is that because the Jews broke a treaty, the ethnic cleansing is okay. Well, let's take your logic. Well, let's let's take your logic. Oh, okay. Because they broke a treaty, war broke out. Ethnic cleansing is okay. Great. So, by your logic, the Palestinians broke their treaty against Israel. Intifada broke out, and for that reason, by your logic, the Israelites can now ethnically cleanse the Palestinians. You're trying to live. Wait, yeah, I'm gonna land. Final point, and then I'll let you reply. Here's the double standards. You're trying to say when Muhammad did it to the Banu Quraysh, it was okay. But when other Jews do it to Muslims, it's not okay. I can see the double standards and I think everyone else can see the double standards as well. Go on. Because the situations are different. The Palestinian situation isn't the same as the, Bani, uh, the Jewish tribe. The Palestinians have been constantly getting killed. And we're forced to accept things. We don't accept them. You find you've got a few corrupt leaders, they'll sign something, but they don't represent the people. Yeah. Let's say, imagine Israel came in and they took most of this land and there's a few corrupt leaders, they'll agree, yeah, we'll give you, you can have half and we'll yeah. have a... Yeah. And let's say there's a British response from people. Is that, would you say that's justified that they bro broke the treaty? Right. So I'm going to answer your question. But I just want to point out your special pleading. You're trying to say that when Muslims conquer non-Muslim lands, it's okay. When Muslims commit ethnic cleansing, it's okay. Yes, that's what Muhammad did and he's the first Muslim. He was a Muslim that committed ethnic cleansing. He belongs to the same ummah that you do. Now, but in each of those instances, you're saying it's okay when Muslims do it. Now, this is the double standard because you're complaining when Israel is doing it to Muslims and Christians. Now, hold on one second. I want to be clear, as a Christian, I condemn what Israel is doing to Palestinians. I condemn it. You've heard me say it. 
You've heard me say it. You've heard me say it. Right? I condemn it. Why? Because I follow the example of Jesus Christ. But for the same reason, I also condemn Muhammad. Now, here's the difference. You can join with me in condemning the Zionist for doing exactly what Muhammad did, but you can't be consistent and condemn Muhammad. Yeah, because you're brainwashed. Because I believe when Jesus be spelling comes back, there will be a war and, we're go and there's going to be killing. Now, does that mean that Jesus is is um, uh, ethnically cleansing the Antichrist army and his folk and his people. Right. So when Christ returns, the world will be conquered. That's absolutely right. Right. Yes, absolutely. It will be justfully. But my point to you is this. You can't complain if people are conquering your lands when you're trying to argue it's okay to conquer other people's lands. That's not a consistent position. It's not consistent. I think if you, Everyone if who's hearing this truth, debate can see if that. Jesus comes here now with the truth. I'm on, I'm on his side. I'm not. Even if he's going to conquer someone, I'm on his side. But the, reali the reality is, brother, that you and all Muslims are against Jesus Christ. No. You're utterly against Jesus really? Christ. Oh, you know, when Christ really comes and he conquers the world and makes it submit, that will include every caliphate. Every caliphate and every caliph will well, bow the knee to the name of Jesus and confess him as Lord. Well, we, but this, well, we don't believe he says he's going to say he's the Lord. We believe you will, you will. Whether you want to or not, you will. I believe he's a right Because when he returns from heaven with the accompaniment of angels, you will have no excuse. You will not be able to do anything else because your religion will be disproven in that moment. When Jesus returns with the angels as his accompaniment, you will not be able to deny that he is Lord and you will bow and call him Lord. And every caliph and every ulama and every scholar of Islam will bow and call we're Jesus on Lord. We're on you're side. against Jesus we're Christ. Side, you're against Jesus Christ because you're against his holy church. Only those that are with and for his holy church are for Jesus Christ. I don't believe the churches now are teaching about the real Jesus. I, I think there's things that Paul has introduced. Paul, Paul has done things and he's changed the religion completely. That's so, this is a constant claim that Muslims make. Now I would like you to prove it. I'm sure... Yeah. Brother, brother, just focus on me. He's just one of these people that interrupt. I, I don't have... Right. I've read it, I've so, read it. so can I just tell you something? As someone who has looked into this claim that Muslims make, right? Muslims are just wrong. You're being lied to in your mosques, bro. The, the, the Dayi are lying to you. The Ulama are lying to you. Let me give you some examples. Jesus Christ taught that he was God. Paul taught Jesus Christ was God. I don't believe Jesus. Taught I will. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. We'll go through. I'll give you examples of everyone. Right, I'll just give a, through a few examples and then if you want references, I'll show you the references. Fair? I'll give you three examples. Jesus Christ taught, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ taught that he would die for the sins of the world. Paul taught that Jesus Christ would die for the sins of the world. Jesus Christ taught that he was the Messiah. Paul taught that Jesus was the Messiah. So there's three examples of where Jesus teaches exactly what Paul teaches. Now, which one of those do you want me to show you the references for? You want a reference where Jesus says he's God in yeah. the Bible? Yeah, I'll show you that. I'll show you that. That's absolutely fine. Yep, I, I, I will show you that explicitly. That is absolutely fine. Right. Now, let us be clear. Let us be clear about something. It is not necessary to show us in those exact words. Oh, no, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Now you're mocking, but if I flip it on you, you'll, be, you'll do special pleading. All right, so let me challenge, let me challenge Muslims. Let me challenge all of you arrogant, well, let me challenge all of you arrogant Muslims. Let me challenge all of you arrogant Muslims. Show me in the Quran where Allah says, pray five times a day. I want it in those words. Show it. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. No, 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 bro. Bro, I, I am having a conversation with him. I will debate you in a second. Do not be rude. So. So I'll, let me, I'll just talk to you. I'll just talk to you. I'll come and find you, bro. I'll come and debate you. And when I do, I know exactly what you'll do. You will run away. Right. So let me show you where Jesus says explicitly that he is God. Right? Well, the problem is before you start. Yeah, go on. 
I believe the Bible's been changed. That's fine, but the question still remains. That G the, I'm going to show you. No, I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to show you. Yeah, he's going to run. When I come and debate this guy, watch him run. Watch him run, because I am going to go and debate this guy. I deal with you people all the time. You'll run. You will. I bet you. Now. I want to. I, I want to. I want to have a conversation with you. Let me. Let me finish our conversation. Learn some manners. I'll come and debate with you in a second. Yeah. I'll come find you. Yeah. Right. I'm going to show you where Jesus says explicitly that He is God. Okay. In the Quran, Allah gives Himself 99 names. One of those names is the first and the last. Can you call yourself the first and the last? Right. I'm going to show you where Jesus calls Himself the first and the last. Are you listening? Listen, listening. Are you listening? Please leave it with don't, me. Don't, no, no, listen. Here. Siraj. I'm here. No, no, no. You no, always no, run from no. me. No, I'm you going to. You always run from me. Siraj. You always run from me. Right, I'm going to. Do you I'm want sorry, to hear an answer to this question? This guy always runs from me. Do you want to answer the question? Listen to the answer to the question. I'm saying here. Listen to the answer to the question. To the answer to the question. You talk too much here. Siraj, go to your mother and learn some manners. Your mother has failed you. You have no manners. You have no, no decorum. Have no Go right. to your mother and ask her to teach you some manners. Siraj! Go away, Siraj. You have no manners. Go away. Go away, Siraj. Go away. No! I'm having a conversation with this brother, and then I'm going to have a debate with this brother, and then, no, I'm going to debate you. What did I say he would do? I said if I challenged him to a debate, he would run away, and now he's running away. He's running away. He's saying Siraj is my spokesman. Right, Siraj, go away, you child. Go away, child. Go back to your mother and ask her what manners look like like Siraj. I'll prove you that go away Siraj. No, go away Siraj. 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 Go Go away, Siraj! 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 Go away! Right, brother. He doesn't want to come here. Right. Let me show you. Let me show you. Go away, Siraj! Go away, Siraj, brother. He runs away from you. Let me show you, let me show you this passage. Let me show you this passage. Let me show you this passage. Brother, let me show you this passage. Let me, brother, let me show you this passage. Let me show you. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. When Siraj is not here, let, no, no, no. Brother, I was trying to tell you something here interrupted. No, let me, let me, let me think, no. All right, I'll, right, have a good day, brother. Have a good day, have a good day. God bless you.